Yo, what's up? How you doing? Happy New Year. Happy 2023 to everybody. Niner Nut coming back at you, going over last week's very intense, very interesting, uh, very nail-biting victory over the Las Vegas Raiders. For some reason, every time I go to say the Las Vegas Raiders, it just doesn't feel right. I don't know why. It's like, listen, I'm sorry, man, but your team don't belong in Vegas. I mean, go back to Oakland, go back to LA, you don't belong in Vegas. You know, I enjoyed the Battle of the Bay when it was the Battle of the Bay. Now it's just we run the Bay like always. So I don't know. The whole Las Vegas thing just doesn't work. That does, I don't. I mean, they obviously should have a team. I think so, without a doubt. But I don't know. That black hole just doesn't seem the same to me as it used to uh, when it was in Oakland. But either way, look. Did I just hit this fucker? Yeah, no. Either way, it's uh, it, it was a it was a. Hard-earned victory. It was a good win. A lot of people kind of kind of questioned uh, everything that was going on that day, questioning the game and whatnot. But listen, it's a win's a win at the end of the day. I don't give a shit how we got it. We got it, and we roll on to the next one. So that being said, um, it was a nail biter, man. Um, I don't think anybody any Anybody in their right mind kind of expected it to go the way they did. I mean, who would have expected Jared Stidman to play as well as he did? Uh, I wonder secretly is that there's a reason why the Patriots got rid of him. Uh, because, you know, I remember when he got drafted, there was a lot of talk that he was going to be, you know, the next thing and this and that. And, you know, it never really happened, never really materialized, although they did draft Mac Jones, who isn't looking like the Mac Jones looked like last year. And then they drafted that guy, Zap. So I don't know, man. But I'll tell you one thing. Stidman did look pretty good on Sunday. Also looking pretty good is his lady, man. His wife is fucking hot. Uh, I don't know. I, I know she became like mega famous on Sunday. They just like must have showed her like three or four times her response to uh, that them going down the field that first drive and scoring a touchdown, which was really shock. I gotta give. Uh, I gotta. I gotta say, as much as I can't stand Josh McDaniels and thinks that he's not a head coach, I will say that he kind of threw me off on Sunday going the way he did. I guess you know uh, it was no holds barred, and I guess at this point in the season, why not kind of just put it all on the line? You're playing the best defense in football. Why be submissive to them? Yet he's got the best running back in football in uh, you know in, in in Jacobs, who's had a monster season, man. He's really um I, I think really overcome the odds because there were a lot of people who were down on him last year with the injuries and whatnot, but he he's got over sixteen hundred yards and he leads the AFC or the at least the entire NFL in, in rushing. So kudos to him. But yeah, McDaniels had a nice game plan going on there. And of course Devontae Adams comes back to haunt us like he did in Green Bay. Uh, you know, the guy's an ultra talent. There's no way to stop him whatsoever, man. Um, he's a great wide receiver. He's one of the best in football. So he's again, you know, he's like Justin Jefferson. He's like Stefan Diggs. He's like Jamar Chase. He's one of those guys that's going to get his catches no matter what. Uh, and I'm sure Green Bay is really kicking themselves in the ass for getting rid of him because let's face it. Christian Watson is a young rookie. Uh, that kid Dobbs, Alan Lazard's a solid number two, number three. None of them are on the level like Devontae Adams and uh, Aaron Rodgers really could have used him again this year, even though the Packers have played well down the stretch. But that's primarily been uh, based off them being able to have a really nice one two um, combination in A.J. Dillon, um, you know, and Aaron Jones. So that's understandable. But, uh, you know, I think I think Sunday was. Uh, it was one of those games, man. It was a trap game coming in there. You know, you knew going going to Vegas. This isn't a team that's going to lie down. Uh, I would, I, I, I expected us to blow them off the face of the earth. But look, you know what? Look, I, I see some of these experts, these so called experts, talking shit about this defense. Really, isn't as good as they say. What happened to this defense on Sunday? Look, every team has a game or games where they have, you know. It's not the best effort. Hey, this defense, I hate, I'm not trying to like make amends for the way they played on Sunday, but they were probably tired. They 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 played amazing all season long. They they're bound to have a bad game. I'd rather have this type of game now than in the playoffs when they're expe expected to be a lot tighter. So it was bound to happen, you know. But that being said, the Raiders played good, man. Kid Stidman came out balling out. He had Darren Waller, he had uh Devontae Adams, like we said, he had Jacobs. And he had Hunter Renfro. So we had the full package, man. 
Um, and that being said, you know what? I, look, I know Adams is going to get his catches. I thought Diodor Lenore did a pretty decent job on Adams. He's guarding Devontae Adams. Go back and look at my uh, one of my posts, one of my videos. That's not a catch. That's not a catch. That ball hits the ground. Referees fucked us on Sunday once again, as they've done to us a lot this season. And I'm not just trying to say that like to be like one of those whiny bitches, but I don't like the way they called that game. I mean, the one-handed holding call on Kittle, that's like that's like a, that's a phantom call. Uh, the catch for Devontae Adams, there, there were a lot of others, man. And then there were some penalties that I thought was just plain old sloppy play by us. I think we had about eight penalties, which is way too much. But look, we got the win. Robbie Gould's going to miss once in a blue moon, okay? The guy's a future Hall of Famer. Everybody misses. Vinatieri missed. Morton Anderson missed. Gary Anderson missed. Everybody misses, okay? Um, that being said, most importantly is we got the W in overtime, okay? Um, again, some great play from Tashad Gibson Jr., a guy who nobody is talking about, although I will say Samuel Acho, who I'm not the biggest fan of, the commentator, guy who ex ex linebacker for the Arizona Cardinals. He mentioned him recently in his podcast and said how no one's talking about him and various other players on that 49ers squad. And I agree. Those are the guys we don't hear about. We don't hear about Jimmy Ward. We don't hear about um trying to think of who else in that defensive backfield that we that we just don't hear. There's a lot of guys we don't hear about. And I, you know, I don't know why these experts consider themselves experts. We don't hear about Ray Ray McLeod and how much he's meant to the kick return and punt return game. We don't talk about, hear about Mitch Wisnowski, who's how, how much he's meant to the punt game. You know, like I've said week after week, without him, man, we don't pin teams back. So the, the, these so-called experts, man, I, you know, I, I, have a, I have a bone to pick with a lot of them. Thank you for joining the live feed. I really appreciate it. As always, Elijah Mitchell's our best running back. CMC is more of a gadget guy, the run game. I got to disagree with you there, bro. Listen, CMC is the difference in this team, okay? Um, for his pass catching abilities, for his the way he's able to use his eyes and, and get positive yardage when it doesn't look like there's going to be there, the experience that he brings – uh, is second to none. Elijah Mitchell definitely, I think, is 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 the second back on that team with his tenacity. Um, he's still young, but CMC is where it's at, dude. And this Jordan Mason kid, this Jordan Mason kid's going to be the future. It's funny. I was talking to somebody today, and I was saying how I was defending my post about Shani, how I thought he's had uh, Mitchell is a better running back. I don't think the defense cares about personal accolades. They want team greatness. Mitchell is a better running back. You're talking about like in all – oh, I see what you're saying. I get it. So you're saying CMC is more of like an ultra juggernaut. I feel you on that. Yeah, but I doubt. CMC is like one of those guys that you just don't – it's funny. You uh, We talk about him because I'm looking at the stats today, and I'm still like boggled how he doesn't – how he's not in the Pro Bowl. I mean, other than Austin Eckler, he's got – I don't know. What does he have? Over 70-something catches for a running back? And, uh, you know, I think he's got about over 700 yards, but he, one thing that he has that Austin Eckler doesn't have, he's got a thousand yards on the ground. So he's going to end up having more total yardage than Austin Eckler. And he also, uh, both of them have been nicked up, but I don't think he's been as, as hurt as Austin Eckler, but yeah, dude, it's an absolute travesty that he is not in the Pro Bowl. I, I, I Listen, I gave up on this Pro Bowl bullshit, you know, years ago. It's it's nothing but bullshit. I I, I don't want to get into it. I don't I, I hate all All-Star games. I think they're fucking bullshit. I hate the NBA All-Star game. I hate the NBA fucking All-Star weekend activities because it's not the way it used to be with the really good dunk contest with the three-point contest. Now they have all this dog shit bullshit. I hate the NHL is the one place I will say that really kind of has a solid grip on uh, uh, all-star games. You know, they used to have, I, th I think they still have the shooting competition, the skating competition, and then, of course, the game. But the NFL Pro Bowls is a pile of shit. I'm sorry, because it's a popularity contest. Who's doing the voting? They say we're doing the voting, but we're not. I don't think we're doing it at all. I think that's, it's the writers secretly doing it, not trying to be conspiracy theorists. And, you know, we're meant to believe that we have a say in it. Bullshit, because if that was the case, uh, it'd be, it'd be a lot different. So I don't, I don't really believe in that at all. Uh, yeah. When they put the Pro Bowl in front of, uh, uh, of the Super Bowl is bullshit too. Kittle helps a lot with parody with this check downs. Well, Kittle helps a lot with anybody with his check downs. I mean, I think that he does help more with Purdy because it seemed to me that 
Purdy's going to him a lot more than Garoppolo was. And a lot of that could be because he's a rookie. But a lot of that also has to do with the fact that there's no Debo Samuel as well. And now they're utilizing Kittle so much more. But at the same time, where Kittle's real wealth is, is his ability to block, catch, and to run routes. I mean, the again, you could have Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey is one of the best receiving tight ends that ever was. But when it comes to a total package, give me George Kittle every time. I'll take I'll take 11 of George Kittle's. Uh, that's just my opinion. Uh, he's a perfect 49er, and that's what we value with the, with this organization. I mean, go back and look at our tight ends, if you will. I mean, we've had some of the some of the best ones. Now, maybe not the same caliber as Kittle. I mean, Brent Jones to me was one of night. Of course, he wasn't as athletic as Kittle, but he sep- he had great separation from the ball. He ran great routes, had great hands. Maybe not have been as good a blocker as Kittle, but Brent Jones was the shit. Uh, a guy who doesn't get a lot of a lot of uh, uh, um, talk about was Davis. You know, Vernon Davis, I think, was a real solid tight end. Was more of a receiver, definitely more of a receiver. But he's had some good career numbers. Go back and look at him. Another guy had he would have never gotten hurt. I think would have turned out to be a real solid tight end and not better than George Kittle. Was Eric Johnson, who's now married to what's her name, Jessica, uh, the chick from who played Daisy Duke, right on the Dukes of Hazard, got the clothing line now. But Eric Johnson, for a guy who was drafted out of Yale, seventh round pick, man, he had two or three good seasons. Then he had, I think, he had the back injury or the neck injury, which made him miss a season. Then he came back, but he had over eighty catches. I remember one year. But tight end is is a place that we've always we've always valued. So Kittle is by far the best forty nine is tight end. I mean, I think ever at the end at the end of the day. Stealing TDs, yeah, that's that's a uh, that's a trip. That's a trip. The tenacity he brings to the game is just is, is second to none. I mean, you can't. It's it's it, 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 it's tenacity like that that you wish all eleven guys had, and it's very rare that they do have that. But again, he's a total package. So, um, you know, you really can't you really can't despair. I apologize, my uh, Facebook message thing is going off. I just left it on. Fuck it. Um, but yeah. Going back to the game, I mean, I, I, another thing I, I like that we're seeing is that Juwan Jennings has the most catches he's ever had in his career. Brandon Ayuk going to have over 1,000 yards. Brandon Ayuk's become a number one receiver. I mean, perfectly run routes, great hands, holds on to the ball. I mean, there was there was a, 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 a segment going down the field in the fourth quarter. I think Purdy went to him three or four times in a row, you know, Um and getting back to what I was saying about Shanahan, me, I had that post up about Shanahan. I, you know, I was talking to someone today, and I, I was defending him. But being objective, what I'd like to see Shanahan, because I'm objective. What I'd, I, I was, I was very critical of Shanahan. I said last year when we were going through our losing streak, if this doesn't change, okay, you may, you may see a coaching change. But I will say, in my opinion, it's been that Shanahan has coached his best season of football this year. Think about it; he's done it on his third quarterback. He's done it with injuries to various running backs. He's done it with no Debo Samuel. He did it with uh, no – I mean, he doesn't really coach the defense. I know that. But I'm saying he's done it without various players. But I think it's his ability to have his system work and have put the players in very much like his father had in Denver. And I always go back to this. Remember, his father had Terrell Davis. Terrell Davis went down. Then there was Olundis Gary. When Olundis Gary went down, it was Mike Anderson. Nobody ever heard of him. And each one of those running backs had 1,000 yards. So did the trade for CMC help? 100%. Um, without a doubt. He's the, missing, he's the missing piece to us, I think. But Shanahan has made some really great calls this season, I think, uh, in the absence of a lot of players. And I think that his ability to bring along Purdy has just been amazing um, because he has a lot to do with that. Now, we all know that Shanahan's end all be all is he has to win a chip or he will never be in that upper echelon of coaches. I mean, he came close a couple of years ago, but they choked it out. And that's what a lot of people remember. Let's let's keep it real. But I'd like to see him utilize. I'm going to say it again. Juice more out of the backfield as a wide receiver. I'd like to see him utilize Ray Ray more. Uh, we've seen what Ray Ray can do, kicking the uh, re- kick returning and punt returning, and you know being utilized as a running back out of the backfield. And I'd like to see him utilize Danny Gray more. I don't know why the holdup all year. I know he was injured, but I would have liked to have seen him got in, getting in there a little more. Um, but but I'm critical of him too at times. But I still think this is his best season. Uh, you know, I want to see more Jen- I'd like to see more Jennings too. I like I'd like to see more Jennings because of his size. 
and because there are times when he looks he looks like he's not really a number three, could be a number two. Uh, and you never know, maybe if he was somewhere else, he'd be doing more damage. That's always the case with a lot of these guys. Uh, he's underused as a receiver. You're 100% correct. That's a great name. Scarecrow is good. Is that like a Batman thing? How does Bosa not win defensive player? In- How does Bosa not win fucking MVP? I don't understand what people are looking at. You got all these other guys. Look, I get Patrick Mahomes, okay? The guy's a freak show. I get it. Other than him, how is Bosa not the MVP? I I, I just, I, I don't see it, okay? Uh, Bosa is, to me, what Reggie White used to be. He changes games on a defensive side. He's what Lawrence Taylor used to do. Now, maybe they're not the same position, but it's you have to take him into consideration each time. What they're also not telling us is, you know, they should go back and watch each game and circle how many times legally Bosa has been held and then add up all those penalties they would have been and add up, you know, all the yardage that would have been and then add another six or seven or eight sacks to that. He would have had 25 because nobody gets held more than Nick Bosa. Uh, There's quick, those quick juice hand work. Yeah, they do work well, but I want to see more of it. I want to see him have the ball dumped him out of the backfield more. Because let's face it, CMC's injury history is pretty high. We have to allow for the fact that he's going to get nicked up a lot. And I think that you're starting to see that now because he is really being overused a lot because we, we also saw that with Debo. But I'd really like to see Juice used a lot more and be a dual threat. Uh, the offensive line is really coming together at the right time. The offensive line has played above expectations. And again, not a lot of people are talking about them, and I don't know why. I mean, Spencer Burford has stepped in, and Aaron Banks have done phenomenal jobs. They're both Bulldogs. Listen, say what you want. McGlitchie's had his best season of football. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. Am I still skeptical of him sometimes? Yeah. Do I think he's a better run blocker than he is a pass blocker? Yeah, but he's had a, done a great job. Jake Brendel, no one's talking about him, the most underrated guy on that line. Daniel Brunskill fills in, again, like the best, guy to fill in and the best tackle in football is Trent Williams but again they don't they don't talk about us the way they should I don't know maybe it's because I'm on the east coast here and I just don't hear it but I'm sure it happens on the west coast where you guys are exactly um yeah Mason needs to play more I agree with you this kid is this kid has got the talent uh I was just actually you know going through the tape the other night watching it with my pops as I always do and he was saying, you really like this kid, don't you? I said, yeah, this kid's got this kid's got afterburners. I don't know what it is. He reminds me of Dalvin Cook a little bit. A poor man's Dalvin Cook, if I will say so myself. Uh, and I think this kid's got 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 the goods, man. I mean, the way he the way he's caught on so quickly, the way he I like the way he slashes between the tackles, and I like the way uh, he runs in the open field, man. I mean, he's got he's he's only going to get better. So he's only going to make more depth for that. That uh, that running backfield, I want to see Purdy dish to others on offense. I love the kid. Listen, I think that I'll be fair here. Okay, you we base rookie of the year off. You know, obviously, how many games total the rookies have played and things like that. But I'll tell you this much: if we weren't basing it off that fact of the matter, Purdy's in the running for rookie of the year. Because anyone who's 262 player drafted, named Mr. Irrelevant from Iowa State, and has played as well as he has, and has looked as calm as he has, and has looked as veteran as he has, and we're only going to go farther. We know we're going to the Super Bowl. How could how could this kid not be in, in, in the race? Obviously, it's because of total games played. Uh, Marion Barber, that's a good uh, that's a good assessment. I like that. I like that. Uh, Marion Baba was like that. Yeah, he very good slash, very good eyes, very underrated, good hands, smart running back. This kid's smart too. I like the way he's able to kind of bend his body to get to the outside. Um, but yeah, look, this was a hard fought win, man. There were a lot of good things that we saw in this. You know, obviously the Purdy connection, George Kittle, Brandon Ayuk, CMC. Um, offensive line didn't give up a sack. We didn't get a sack, but we did have a lot of pressure on Stidman. In fact, Stidman got his fucking ass handed to him on Sunday. Go back and watch that tape and go count how many times he got fucking rocket ship hit. He got fucked up. Definitely went home and had his hot ass lady rub him down. Lucky bastard. Uh, anyway, no, but he, he, yeah, he looked good. He looked good, man. I wonder if, uh, I'd like to see what he's going to do again Sunday, but if so, um, 
I wonder if he's really going to be the long-term starter there because I still think that Josh McDaniels totally dropped the ball getting rid of Derek Carr, but that's a whole other issue. Let's go to some stats from Sunday as we do. Um, just breaking it down. Go to some game box score stats. Purdy was 22 with 35 for 284 yards, two touchdowns, one pick, no sacks. McCaffrey, 19 carries, 121 yards on the ground, averaging 6.4 yards per carry with a touchdown. Jordan Mason, two yards, 13, uh, two carries, 13 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Brandon Ayuk had one carry for 16 yards. Brandon Ayuk, nine catches, 101 yards, one touchdown. Christian McCaffrey, six for 72. Jennings, two for 46, showing his ability to stretch the field. Ray Ray had that big uh, catch, one for 42. I wish we could see a lot more of him. And, of course, Kittle, four for 23. The Purdy pass to Kittle in the back of the the end zone is one of the main reasons why. It reminded me of the Dwight Clark catch from Montana. Okay, maybe it wasn't as dramatic because it wasn't as big a game as it was, and he didn't roll out the way Montana didn't have the defenders in his face. But for a rookie to have that much poise to put the ball exactly where it had to be is fucking amazing. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. That could be a throw of the year. Yeah, Danny Gray made a play, right? It's good to see it, man. Um, Hope he's got upside. Do you think they're going to play all these starters? What I'm seeing right now, my reports looks to me that obviously there's no Dre Greenlaw. Um, which is okay because, I mean, that's not okay, but I want to have him back for the playoffs. But I don't know, man. You know, I kind of feel like we should play the starters, at least for the first half, blow this team off the face of the fucking earth, solidify that seed one if we could get it. Although, fuck the New York Giants because they're fucking us in the ass by not playing their stars. I fucking hate them. Um, I, I don't know. I, it, you know, I think at this point it's pretty moot. But I don't think we're going to play the starters the whole time. Uh, hey, you may be right. I don't know. I'd like to see it. I'd like to see Purdy, you know, have another game under his belt and just kind of, you know, continue on what he's doing. Such poise is why he may be our future quarterback as well. And Purdy, we trust exactly. Thank you. You get it. Yeah, I agree with you, man. I'm sorry. Trey Lance isn't even a, isn't even a, a, a thought next season. Not even close. I don't give a fuck. Okay. Um, Going back to these stats, let's see. No fumbles, obviously. Fred Warner, not one of his best games. He had that penalty, that face mask he had. I thought he was going to rip that fucking guy's head off, dude. Hunter Renfro always seems to get the brunt of shit. Fred Warner is a beast, man. 12 uh, tackles. Uh, Talanoa Huffnagel, nine tackles. Greenlaw had eight. Jimmy War seven. Al Shahir, seven. Lenore had seven. We didn't get any sacks, but we did get a lot of pressure. Um couple quarterback hits. Huffnega lit him up. Lenore lit him up. Kerry Hyder Jr. and Ty McGill lit him up. Nick Bosa hit fucking stinned him five times. Listen, man. You know, it must have been like, uh, you ever see that movie? Uh, what is it? Uh, Higher Learning, Buster Rhymes. What's that line he's got? Man, uh, I hit him so hard. He's going to feel me for the next three birthdays. That's exactly how it's got to be for, for Stidman, man. He's definitely going to feel... Nick Bosa for a long time, man, because he got fucked up, man. Even if they weren't considered sacks, he got fucked up. Yeah, it was one to slide. He's a, look, he's, one is entitled to have it. He's a great linebacker. Um, Dre's another pro bowler. Dre's another pro bowler. Lance may never see the field. I don't see why he should. Um, you know, you know, bring of course. I'm happy that the surgery went well. Hopefully in camp. Get a nice three-way competition. They should bring Jimmy G back. Have the three-way competition, but right now, got to ride the Purdy train. There's there's no if ends or, or buts about it. Uh, Arik Armstead came up huge by the goal line. Basically fucking just dogged that guy one-on-one and just super smashed fucking Jacobs. Although Ty McGill got loose too and helped out. The interceptions from Tashawn Gibson Jr. for 56 yards and Drake Jackson, that catch. He's an interesting kid with those backflips. He's got a lot of upside. He'll only get better. And he has, you know, he has one of those stats. Ray Ray McLeod, two returns, 48 yards. No one's talking about that. All season long, Ray Ray's been great with this. Uh, and, of course, Robbie, three for four. But kicked it, made it most when it matters. Mitch Wisnowski, not talking about him. Two punts for 93 yards, 46.5 average, one inside the 20. You know, going over to the Raiders side of the ball, uh, why do you think they don't call the holes on Bosa? That's a good question, dude. I, I don't know. 
I real I really don't understand. Um, sometimes I wonder if it's because they're trying to protect the quarterback from him because he has an ability to get into the offensive backfield every fucking time. If you look at it, I kind of feel that way. Maybe I'm biased because I'm a nine or not, but that's the way it looks to me. Other than that, it's like, are you fucking blind? I mean, a lot of the times they're right on top of the goddamn call, which pisses me off. It's like when the ref's in the back of the end zone, he can see in front of him and he's saying stuff. How are you missing that? You're there. You're right on top of the fucking play. It was like that chick uh, who called the um, the penalty on on Kittle on Sunday, the one one handed thing. She's right there. But I think a lot of them don't want to go back and piggyback and say they were wrong with the instant replay because I think it'll ruin their credibility and it'll also ruin their ability to be the referee for a big game, such as the Super Bowl or you know the NFC Championship and shit like that. Because it does happen like that. It, there, there is like a popularity contest with that shit sometimes. Because to my knowledge, they go back and look at the things and see what ref fucked up. You know, uh, I don't know. Hopefully we use Mason, Ray, Ray, et cetera, so we can warm up. Blah, blah. Yeah, I agree with you, man. And I, I'd like to see them use more in, in, in the um, in the main thing. Stidman, 23 of 34, 365, three touchdowns, two picks. He definitely got laid that night. Uh, Josh Jacobs, 17 carries, 69 yards. We shut him down in the second half. You didn't hear shit from him. Um, Devontae, you know, seven catches, 153 and two. Guy's a freak. Darren Walla, three for 72 and one. They, boy, did they missed him all year. And then there was Matt Collins, three catches, four. There's Matt Collins, that fucking, you see that low, that low blow block that fuck hit Dre Greenlaw with? That could have been Dre Greenlaw's knees. He should have been thrown out of the fucking game for that. That's dirt, bro. Don't fucking be a bitch and get down low and throw a block like that. Just, you know what, man? I'm not asking. I know I'm not as, saying you got to, like, try and knock him Greenlaw off his feet. Throw, you know, throw a block. But don't do that, dude. Don't go low like that. Don't go for someone's knees. That's just dirt. That's plain fucking dirt. Um, Let's see what else. They didn't get any sacks, uh, which was which was good. They're a team that just needs a bunch of players. They need a they need a bunch of defensive players. They need a pass rush. I mean, obviously, no Chandler Jones isn't helping them. <laughs> All I know is Amik Robinson got bounced. CMC used him like a fucking blue ball. Just boink. That that sound. On that note, how bad of a commentator is Mark Sanchez? Um, I don't like to call cats out, but you suck as a commentator. You suck. I'll say it again. You suck. You're up there with Troy Aikman, that other idiot, Buck, who's a fucking moron. You suck. Okay? So fucking annoying. So fucking annoying. And Josh McDaniels, burn that ugly fucking hat. What are you, playing tennis with that fucking hat? Sorry, I had to get sidetracked there, but I can't help it, man. I just, I hate Mark Sanchez. I'm sorry. It was like the worst job of commentating. My fucking 16-year-old niece could have done a better job, and she doesn't watch football, obviously, nearly as much as we do, but she could have done a better job. He sucks as a commentator. He missed, I don't want to get into it. He missed so many things. Um, moving on, you know, again, Playoffs are what they're going to be. We'll go, we're going to wait to see who we play. I, I've been saying this all week long. I don't give a fuck if it's the Giants. I don't give a fuck if it's the Vikings. I don't care if it's the Seahawks. We're going to we're going to we're going to wipe the floor with I, I, any of them. I'd like to just since I'm an East, I live on the East Coast, and I have a lot of friends that are Giants fans, and I despise that whole fucking team very much. I'd love to roll over them, man, just for old times' sake. But I'd also like to roll over the Vikings too because they deserve it. When you're cotton candy. You know, when you try and make people think you're candy cane, you need to be shown that you're soft like you are. And the Vikings are soft. They have the God, most god-awful defense in football. So, But I'd also like to see the Eagles lose um, Sunday. I don't know. I don't know if Jalen Hurts is playing. I don't know if Minshew's playing. Maybe they're going to sit their starters. I don't know. We're going to have to wait to see who we play. It just looks that way. Also, too, uh, you know, look. Next year, I think I don't like to like jump, jump past anything, but um, I think that we're in a great place right now. You got three quarterbacks on your roster. Obviously, two of them have had phenomenal seasons this year. Um, this being one of Jimmy G's best seasons and the emergence of Brock Purdy. How you 
can have Trey Lance in the conversation is, uh, you know, I, it, it confuses the shit out of me. I don't think you can. I think he's the odd man out for a lot of reasons. And management's going to have to come to terms with that. Um, because we ne- we didn't need him, to be honest. Uh, all fairness to him, we never needed him at all. At the, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to keep burying that because I know I'm like a fucking broken record with that. But I think that, uh, again, the end-all, be-all for Shani to really come into the Jedi Master realm is to win a chip. And um, he knows that more than anybody. This team is built right now and playing at a level that we haven't seen them play for um, even since three years ago when they made the the Super Bowl and lost to the Kansas City Chiefs. This is a better team than that team was. Um, I think that there's a lot of things going on that make them a better team. A, I think the defense is just on another level, better than it was three years ago. I think we've we've got the answer, a quarterback. Uh, you know, I don't have to tell you guys how good this kid's playing, all the things he's doing that, that just don't happen to rookies. It's the perfect story for us when we win a Super Bowl with Brock Purdy is 262. It puts the icing on the cake and then some. So, I mean, all the weapons are there. We're getting healthy at the right time. Debo's coming back. Elijah Mitchell's coming back. Javon Kinlaw's coming back, or he is back. Kevin Givens is coming back. Um, Spencer Burford looks to be getting better since last week. So, you know, we're getting all these guys back at the at, at the most uh, correct time. And imagine what we'll be like when we're a, a full-fledged, 53-player team of, you know, guys who aren't on injury reserve and missing any time. And maybe possibly with a week off, if we get that first seed, uh, it'll be beneficial. I'll tell you this much. Nobody wants to come into Levi Stadium and play us. And on that note, nobody wants us coming to them because we're a pretty damn good road team, too. I don't think a lot of people want to face us. And I'm not worried about the Eagles, man. Again, as good as they played this season, I still don't think that they are as tested as we are and they haven't had to play a lot of the teams we have and they haven't had to go through a lot of the diversity that we've had in terms of injuries the only team i've said it along that is in my mind is the kansas city chiefs and i think what better way to have a a a rematch against the guys who beat us three years ago purdy versus mahomes you know uh uh, and uh, oh you know Leader of a gang on the block against new kid on the block. You know, the number one against number 262. You know, um, Mr. Irrelevant against fucking Mr. Rollover TV doing those bad, those stupid commercials, except for the one with Andy Reid, which is the only one that's funny. What better way, man? They're the only team that, like, had our number um, in that blowout, although... You know the team has the team has gotten better since then and learned. I you know I think D'Amico Ryan's definitely learns from each game, and he's a most again of the reasons why we've had so much luck this year. Now go look at some of the stats I posted before. I'm going to post some more later defensively, but offensively, go look at the yards we've been able to acquire. Go look at our yards per average. Go look at the touchdowns we score on offense. Go look at the at, at the fact that we don't turn the ball over on offense. And then go look at the defensive side of the ball when I post those stats, obviously, and look at where we're ranked. Look at the turnovers we force. The biggest difference with us is the interceptions, which we didn't have last year, which we didn't have two years ago. You know, we're getting that a lot more. And we're getting that from guys like Huffnega to Sean Gibson Jr., Jimmy Ward. Um, So, again, you know, everything is right where it has to be. Everything is right where it has to be. There is no reason why this 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 story should end any other way than a Super Bowl win. Uh, we are going to get to play Green Bay. What do you think? I hope we do. We all, I'm not worried about them. Who said that we don't own Aaron Rodgers? Because what have you been watching the last couple of years? We own Mr. Discount Double Check, and he knows that. They're not that good, man. You know, yeah, they've played good down the stretch, but look at their stats. They base everything off their running game. They don't really have a unique number one. Of course, you could never count Rodgers out, but they're not what they were. Okay, then there's no one in the NFC really that's 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 up to our level right now. I think a lot of people want to see, you know, an Eagles 49er matchup, and that's fine, man. You know, I'm all down for that. 
Uh, I think that our, our defense can definitely can definitely handle that and force them into being what they're not. And that's having forcing Hurts to just stand back and throw the ball, you know, which I don't, I, I think he's going to have a hard time doing, but you know, we shall see. Look, this weekend should be an interesting game. David Blau makes his second appearance as starter for the Arizona Cardinals. There's no DeAndre Hopkins. That team is totally depleted. I will, I will say this. Greg Dorch is a good young wide receiver. And I like that tight end. They got McBride. Is it? Uh, I think it's McBride. Uh, he's not bad. Uh, you know, it's JJ Watts last game. He's going to retire. Um, other than Buda Baker, man, you know, there's not too many guys on that team. That team's a disaster. I, I wonder if Kingsbury gets fired at the end of the season. It's not all his fault. He hasn't had a healthy Kyler Murray. He lost Colt McCoy. He didn't really have a, a, a healthy Hollywood Brown all season. So I can't put the blame on him a hundred percent, but I could see that being a change in Arizona. Um, it's possible. But this should be a victory for us. We'll have to see who starts, who goes where. What I'm reading, Purdy's going to start. And it uh, looks like CMC could sit out. So we'll, we shall see. Um, you know, other than that, I just want to say it's so good to see that that young man Hamlin in, in, in Buffalo is getting better. Um I don't want to. Uh, uh, I don't want to tell everybody what you already know. How scary and ugly and disgusting it was to see what happened to him, man. It, it was a tragedy. To keep watching that replay, just like I don't know, man. It, it, it reminded me of watching something that you really didn't want to see. That was just terrifying him to fall. I'm just happy he's doing better, man. Um, God bless him and his family, man. But uh, I'll be coming back at you with some more content. This is a Niner Nut. In the meantime, please subscribe to the channel. Any questions, comments, uh, always hit me up. I really appreciate you guys on the live feed and being part of the page. God bless. Enjoy your week. And let's kick the shit out of the Cardinals and end the season right. And thank you, New York Giants, for nothing. Peace.